This video is brought to you by Soundcore. Today we're checking out the Soundcore Boom 2 and this is how you upgrade a speaker. You take the original motion boom, yeah, you just massively overhaul the sound. The most important aspect of a speaker. So that's what they did. There have been some other improvements. We'll compare them all today. But I can tell you now, this one's a goodie. Now the retail price here is 129 US dollars. So you get three colors to choose from, black, green, and I've got the blue color. Now the speaker has a pretty simple hard plastic finish all around and same with the speaker grill. So it does feel a little bit cheap, but the design is nice and it's definitely more interesting looking compared to the original motion boom. Now you don't get a premium fabric finish on speakers from JBL, but the actual speaker itself is pretty lightweight considering its size. It weighs in at 1.7 kilos. It's a little bit bigger overall than the motion boom, but they both weigh the exact same. And you get some decent grip on the bottom of the speaker, which will hold it in place. But there isn't that much there, so over time I do hope that does hold up. And now you get a very solid handle with some added grooves underneath, making it nice and easy to carry around. But it does add to the overall bulk of the speaker. Now you get an IPX7 waterproof rating. The speaker can also float in water. But if you submerge it in salt water, it's always a good idea to rinse that off. Now you don't get any dust resistance, so if you're working in construction, it might be a bit on the risky side. Even taking it to the beach, it should be fine, but just try not to get too much sand in the speaker. It's nice to have a bit of peace of mind with some dust resistance. Now you get physical controls on the top of the speaker that are by default lit up, but you can turn this off and adjust the strength of the lights as well. And on there, you can control everything, play pause, double press to play pause for track forward and triple press to skip tracks back. And you can hold that down for your voice assistant as well. That'll use some microphones in the speaker. So you can take calls with the built-in microphone, but it's only gonna work when you're pretty close to the speaker. Here are some samples. This is what the microphone sounds like about a meter away from the speaker. This is what the microphone sounds like about two meters away from the speaker. Now that bass button will of course boost the bass and gonna drive 20 extra watts of power which makes a massive difference. I will demonstrate that later. You've also got your PartyCast 2.0 button to spare the speaker with up to 100 compatible Soundcore speakers that also have PartyCast 2.0. The Motion Boom doesn't have this, but you can still pair two of the same speakers together to work in stereo mode, aka TWS mode. So when you have two of the same speaker, that's gonna work like a regular pair of bookshelf speakers. So you get a left and right audio channel, which is gonna give you a more immersive soundstage. I wish I had two of these because just one of them sounds impressive. So I can already imagine how good two of them are going to sound. Even a pretty compact speaker like the JBL Charge 5 sounds seriously impressive in stereo mode. Now you get some hidden extra controls on that bass button. You can double tap that to turn the lights on and off and you can long hold on that to switch between the different light modes. And of course you can customize this in the app with more freedom. So you get seven modes, you can customize the color for each mode and you have a slider to adjust the strength of the lights. And the lights will react to your music. It does work better with electronic music or songs with a more consistent beat. And at max strength, the lights are pretty bright. So in a darker room, they will light up your party or if you just want a, a personal light show in your room. Now, when it comes to battery life, you're getting an advertised 24 hours, but that's gonna be at 50% volume with the lights off and with bass up off as well. So that's the same advertised amount that Motion Boom has. You also get USB-C in for charging and a USB-A out to charge other devices, but you get no auxiliary port on either speaker. And in the app there, you get some auto power off customization as well. Now, when it comes to connectivity, you get Bluetooth 5.3 here and just SPC and AAC. You get no high res codecs, same as a motion boom. But like the boom, you still get multi-point connection so you can connect two devices to the speaker at the same time. And you don't even need to pause playback on one device before playing it on your other device. It'll automatically switch over. It only takes about two to three seconds. But now let's talk about what's most important, the sound quality. So starting with the original Motion Boom, that gave you two 15 watt woofers, two passive radiators with 30 watts total. Where well, the Boom 2 completely switches it up with one 50 watt woofer and two 15 watt tweeters. So 80 watts power in bass up mode and 60 watts total with bass up off. My first use of the speaker, it was on the morning I was going to a metal festival here in Sydney and I just played some metal, like it was like 30, 40% volume. It was kind of early in the morning. But the first thing I noticed was that bass. It just had an immense amount for the speaker at that size. So the double kicks, the distorted guitar sounded incredibly heavy and I was just blown away, <laughs> my first impression. But it wasn't just the bass, the actual clarity of the instruments and the vocals still cut through incredibly well. Now this is marketed as a party speaker. So the bass is 100% the standout. It's very impressive the amount that you're getting, but like I said, the clarity is still decent. So listening to any genre, some just like acoustic tracks, tested out some classical tracks, some more indie rock, some EDM, hip hop, doesn't really matter. Everything sounds very nice on the speaker. 
And I'll leave you with some sound samples comparing the two in just a sec, but just explaining the sound first here. We'll start with the low level listening. So compared to the boom, I actually think the motion boom sounds slightly better at those lower volumes with slightly more treble detail and the bass is pretty even, but that's my only real complaint with the sound. The first few clicks of volume, like when you get up to the four clicks, the bass starts to kick in, but below that, the bass is just pretty lacking. But when you go past those first four clicks, the speaker really starts to kick into gear. So with the Boom 2 at 50% volume, that's equivalent to the Motion Boom at about 65% volume, and they sound like completely different speakers. The Boom 2 has bass that hits a lot deeper and just has a fuller sound with more impact. The mids are also smoother, where the Motion Boom can get a bit shouty at times. Like at lower volumes, the treble does stand out more in the Motion Boom, but this is likely due to the fact that it has less bass, so the treble can cut through a bit easier. The treble on the Boom 2 though is still nice and detailed and never gets harsh. Now on the Motion Boom, when you start to go past about 60% volume, you start to notice that bass doesn't really increase where the mids and treble will. So the closer you go to max volume, you really start to notice this massive bass difference. You just get a lot more bass on the Boom 2 at those higher volumes. And the Boom 2, when you start going past like 70, 75% volume, it can only increase the bass so much because they're trying to minimize the amount of distortion it has. And thankfully there's barely any distortion on both speakers. I was testing 50% volume, 75% volume, and max volume. On one track they used to test, I think it's called Midnight, there's like maybe the tiniest bit of distortion. I couldn't tell if it may have just been from like the acoustics in the room, but it was slightly noticeable on the Motion Boom, barely noticeable on the Boom 2 though. So I tested out the, ba the bassiest, heaviest songs I could test, and there was no issues with the distortion pretty much. And when it comes to like those really deep sub bass notes, like speakers of this size, you just need to bring your expectations down. You need a speaker size of at least five to six inches, preferably a subwoofer to actually get some like low deep bass notes. So songs that have those really deep notes, you're just not gonna be hearing it on either speaker. Now, if you wanna know specific uh, decibel measurements, measuring two meters away from the speaker, here's what I got for the Motion Boom and the Motion Boom 2. So on the Motion Boom, you get a nine band EQ, but on the Boom 2, you get that nine band EQ and you can actually adjust each band to a specific frequency that you like. So that's the most impressive customization I've seen for any speaker. I think it sounds great with the stock tuning. I don't mind boosting the treble slightly, but yeah, the stock tuning just works great for me. But now I'll leave you with some sound samples on the two so you can kind of hear it for yourself. I don't have the best recordings here, but you get a rough idea. And I'll also show you the differences at different volume ranges.
So there you go. If you're just looking for a solid speaker that goes hard, but still sounds decent, you want to save a bit of money, you can't go wrong with the Boom 2. But if you're looking for a slightly more compact speaker, be sure to check out my Soundcore Motion 300 review right here. Currently my most used speaker because I just have it hanging in my shower. So I'm using it all the time. Quick shout out to my channel members and all my supporters on Ko-Fi. Really appreciate the support. Thanks for tuning in. Stay picky. I'll see you in the next one. Bye now.